Hi, greetings and welcome back in Roy's desk. Well, before uploading the video on the sound test of this board with LM3886 IC, I thought I'll just make one small video on calculating very small value inductors, for example, which we use in this CL networks. So the values used are typically from the range of 0.7 micro -Henrys to 1 micro -Henrys, which cannot be measured with this kind of meters. And there are ways of measuring this with one function generator. But if you don't have a good function generator and you have something like this, which doesn't go close to 1 megahertz, then there is only one way of measuring the inductance that is through one LC tank circuit. What you need for it is just one oscilloscope. So in this video, I'll show you how to measure the very low value inductors with just an oscilloscope. So without wasting any further more time, let us get started. Now these Thiel networks are very important components for this LN3886 boards and this is mainly having one resistor, 10 ohm resistor and one inductor coil typically ranging from 0.7 to 1 micro -Henrys in the value and I do have some couple of low value inductors in here. These ones are 1.2 micro -Henrys and this is 1.1 micro -Henrys and this is 0.2 micro -Henrys. And these air core coils are typically in the range between 1 to 2 micro -Henrys also. So let us see if this meter can measure it or not. Now this one, if you don't know about this meter, this one is having maximum frequency range of 600 kilohertz. This only measures inductor and capacitor. So if I hook one of the inductors in this. It shows 0, 0.0 micro -Henrys. it cannot measure it and if I can press the frequency check button, see it is ranging to 644 kHz. So it can range to pretty high frequency for measuring inductors or capacitors but it cannot measure these low values because for measuring these you need something close to 1 to 2 megahertz. and if I connect this air core inductors. Yep, again 0 micro -Henrys. and if I check the frequency it's 645 kilohertz. There is no chance that it can measure the 0 0.2 micro -Henrys, but still. Yep, same, no values. And if you are having this multifunction testers, this is the T7H model, the updated model. There is no way this can measure these inductor values, but still. So I connected the two leads and if I press start. Okay, it detects this one as one resistor. So this is also not feasible for measuring this low, ultra low value inductors basically. So the only way that remains is using our oscilloscope to measure using one tank circuit that I have made in here. And the working of the circuit is very simple. So the current will flow through the resistor once we connect the voltage across it. So the current will flow through the resistor and it will charge the capacitor and it will also build up the magnetic field in the inductor. And once we disconnect the power, it will try to oscillate. So and we have to capture that oscillating frequency with our oscilloscope and there is a certain setting that we have to make in our oscilloscope to capture that sudden oscillation. So let me get ready with the setup and then we will test. Okay, so before going into testing, I would like to talk about one small topic that is called capacitance loading of the probes. And if you see, these are the specifications of the probe that comes with our HDH242 oscilloscope. And if you look at this row, you will see it shows the capacitance loading or the equivalent capacitance at 1x and 10x. Mostly the logic is that at 10x, the capacitance loading is very low. And at 1x, the capacitance loading is high. As you can see, the maximum capacitance loading at 1x is 115 picofarads and at 10x it's 22.5 picofarads so that is why people will always use 10x where the capacitance value is critical but for our case i'll be using 1x because 
we are anyways using 10 nanofarads or nanofarad range capacitor and in that the small values won't affect much plus our oscilloscope also doesn't go to very low voltage level so it will be very hard to capture at 10x so it's better to put it to 1x but if you are using a very small value capacitor then you must choose 10x so that the capacitance loading does not happen if you are curious the voltage that i'm using in here is 3.99 close to 4 volts okay so now let us talk about the settings that we need in our oscilloscope and this is the most important part in measuring the inductance of this low values so first thing what we need to do is we need to set the trigger so the trigger should be in dc coupled mode and the type should be single so we will measure the burst of the oscillation that comes and then we have to set the trigger level to a very low value say some 200 millivolts and also the voltage per division should be very low not too much low but should be at least so for me it's uh, I've set it to 200 millivolts I will remove this measure cursors yeah so you set your time base also to its almost to very low value like for me per division is 100 nanoseconds now so you set it to a very low value so that the sampling rate is at its highest or the peak value and for channel 1 it's at its DC coupling mode so what we need to do now is this is the most important part see it's disconnected now so I have to connect it and disconnect it in a very fast manner so in a very fast way we will connect and disconnect and it will capture the oscillation in here so just see what I'm doing oh yeah by the way you can also place one switch in here but I don't have any momentary switch with me at this moment okay so it has captured the wave now let's increase the time division okay so this is the oscillation that we have got and we will calculate the frequency with this now it's supposed to calculate the frequency in here too but I don't know why it's not calculating it but nothing to worry we will use cursors time cursor and we will let us increase the time base a bit okay and let us set the A point to here and the B point to here. So this is frequency, one high and one low. And if you see the value is 880 nanoseconds. Now let us go over to our online calculator and let us see if the value matches this 1.2 micro Henry's or not. Okay, so we got our value as uh, 880 nanoseconds. So we'll put 880 nanoseconds. This will give us our frequency in megahertz range 1.136. So now we will go to the resonant frequency calculator. So our capacitor value was 10.78 nanofarads and our frequency was 1.136. So this gives us our inductor value which is 1.82 micro Henry's which is pretty close and it's 1.2 micro Henry's that's the value that was written and the value that we got is 1.82. Now let us calculate the values for some other inductors. Okay so all the settings are same. Let us quickly connect and disconnect. Okay, so let us now put cursors. This is 780 nanoseconds. Okay, so 780 nanoseconds we will put in here. This gives us 1.28 megahertz everything will be same just this value will change 
this value will be 1.28 megahertz okay so it gives us 1.43 micro -hangries. now in order to know the value of that coil we have some online calculators where you can input different values such as length diameter and number of turns it will give you the approx inductance value so let us do that and match with this okay so if you calculate the dimensions of this coil this is 25.20 in length 7.87 in diameter and this is having 27 turns so let us now go to the website and see what is the value so this is the website i will give the all the links in the description so 7.87 coil diameter the length was 25.20 and 27 turns calculate okay so the value is 1.555 micro -hangries. and if we see our calculation it was 1.4342 it's very close now you can see so in this way you can actually measure or guess the value of the inductors with good precision at least i mean it's okay for our use case for audio now let us check out some other values also now let's try this coil Okay, so the value is 840 nanoseconds and we will also measure the dimensions of this coil. Diameter is 12.22, length is 23.95, we will consider 24 and this is having 17 turns. Okay, so the diameter was 12.2, the length was 24 and the number of turns was 17 so as you can see it's 1.443 micro -hangries. Now, if you remember the time period it was 840 nanoseconds we calculate it's 1.19 megahertz now we will give the values in here 1.19 okay it's 1.6593 micro -hangries which is again very close to here 1.443 micro -hangries. so as you can see you can actually measure it in a very good precision let's try one last value that is the smallest value inductor that i have 0 0.2 micro -hangries. so that's our inductor of r20 code and this means 0 0.2 micro -hangries. let us test okay so the oscillation is this it's a very small oscillation because obviously the value is very small if we want a bigger oscillation we need to replace this capacitor with the higher value but we can still measure it so the value came to be 352 nanoseconds and now if i put the value in here 352 that's 2.84 megahertz we will put 2.84 here okay it's close actually it's very close 0 0.29 micro -hangries. yeah so i'm very happy to see that it works for this low values also this video was mainly to focus how to check the coil values of this air core inductors that we will use in our thiel network and if you do have questions please do put that in the comment and if you like the video please do like share and subscribe we will meet again. Till then, bye-bye.